You're listening to CPA Review and more with your host, Phil Yeager. I'm Rob Metford, your producer, and in this week's episode, Phil interviewed Justin McAuliffe, uh, founder of CPA Enterprises PC. He goes a little in-depth about his background working at another CPA firm, how he's been in the industry for the last almost 20 years, and exactly what led him to starting his own CPA practice. Stay tuned after our primary podcast for special sneak peek of some of the behind the scenes conversation that happens before we typically start recording a podcast with the CPA review and more. Again, if you haven't already liked, shared this podcast, we do encourage you to do so to help spread the word to other CPA candidates or accounting and finance individuals who may find interest in conversations that we have on the show. If you're also in the market for a CPA review course and you're a CPA candidate, check out JaegerCPAReview.com and don't forget to use promo code PODCAST to save 15% on your entire CPA review course bundle. We do also apologize. We had a few minor technical difficulties throughout the recording with Justin's microphone, so there are brief moments where he drops off, but we do pick up that conversation where we left off. Once again, thanks for listening to CPA Review and more. Let us know if you have any topics you'd like to hear. And without further ado, I'm going to pass the microphone over to Phil. Hello, everyone. This is Phil Yeager, and we're here with our podcast today. And of course, the name of our podcast is CPA Review and more. And we're here with two important people, all right? The least of the two important is Rob Medford, who produces. <laughs> no, just That's kidding, right. Rob. I you just sit behind Rob. the desk. Yeah, uh. we just... And also, but the key person is Justin McCullough. Did I get that? McCullough? Yes, sir. All right. And Justin is actually a CPA in practice in Long Island. Are you? Is your office in Long Island now? Yeah, so I, I have a home base office in Belmore, Long Island, in South Shore, Nassau County. Um, I service clients throughout the entire country. And I actually, very interesting, I'm from Long Island originally. I grew up on Long Island, a few towns away. And uh, unfortunately, we both have that terrible, well, I don't want to say terrible. We have that New York accent, which I am proud of, all right? Because everyone else out there in the United States, they speak incorrectly. For example, <laughs> all right? We say the word coffee, all right? With a W. That's the way it's pronounced. I don't know where the rest of you are. You know, how do you pronounce coffee. it, Bob? Coffee. Okay. Coffee. Good. Coffee. All right. All right. But just remember, if you want to hear perfect diction, listen to a New Yorker. All right. Would you agree with that? This is this is going to make for some podcast then, because we have a current New Yorker and then a bred New Yorker. And uh, if this is being broadcast to the entire, I, I wonder if they'll even listen to the words. They're just going to listen to the accent the entire time. <laughs> well, yeah, luckily our, we our uh, worldwide we listener base. <laughs> anyway, anyway, Justin has a very interesting background, and we'll talk to him about that. But uh, let's start off. Justin, tell us about yourself. How would you get into accounting? Why did why'd you pick accounting as a major? So uh, thank you, Phil. First and foremost, I want to... Uh, Thank both of you, Robert. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you these past couple of weeks, getting this scheduled. So uh, I think you're a super important part of the show. Um, and then, Phil, it's uh, great to be here, and I appreciate the Thank time. You. So, um, you know, my, my career started um, really, I guess, at Binghamton University. It's a state school here in New York. Um, I graduated there from 2005. Um, when I was at Binghamton is, is when I decided to take accounting as a major, and it wasn't so much to aspire to be a small business owner, an entrepreneur, even a CPA at the time. It was just, it was business. And I had always known business was my passion. It was something I wanted to build towards. What that was going to be was was really unknown at the time. But, you know, accounting being the language of business, it just seemed like a no-brainer to study for. And and I did and, and got the degree. I uh, I did 13 years in practice, five years in an audit firm. I did three and a half years at a small firm here in Long Island. Um, I went from audit to tax, uh, small business, accounting, bookkeeping, payroll tax, sales tax, um, pretty much every single type of partnership 
corporate return you could imagine. And it's a small shop. It was 13 people, three partners. And the level of client and the sophistication has a ceiling. Um, that ceiling hit for me. Um, that was actually where I passed my exam. Uh, they supported my exam. I didn't have my exam passed until I went to the small shop. Um, and, and today, I, I look back on that moment, those three and a half year period being as the most important uh, of my career to what I do t today, uh, which is the bookkeeping, um, you know, accounting, the general ledger and stuff. So um, when I left the small firm in Long Island, I went to, uh, excuse me, I went to a, a mid-sized firm. And um, I was there three and a half years um, and where the firm prior taught me how to do a tax return. I went to the bigger firm and then I really learned how to do a tax return way over my head, technically, um, managerial experience. Like it was, it was interesting. Um, it was a struggle and, uh, I failed for the first year. I didn't think I was going to make it. Um, but I, I, I hit a stride and, um, you know, I found while I was there that I was really good at business development, networking. Once I got the feel for the way the firm worked, the culture, the policies, the practices, getting to know other people, getting more comfortable participating in meetings and phone calls and niche conferences and, and groups throughout the country because it was a, a mid-sized firm, but it had 27 offices nationally. So um, while I was in that small business tax department, I, I found the business development passion and then it all kind of came together. Um, while I was there, uh, while I was there at the mid-sized firm, uh, I did see a, I guess you would want to call it like a downgrade of service or like a quality of accounting that was a big challenge because debits and credits is, is, is the bookkeeping. That's that's the general ledger of the chart of accounts and that's the data that, that gives you that end result for the audited financial statements or even the, uh, the tax return. Uh, tax prep ready trial balance is getting that done and those numbers need to be supported by a tremendous amount of documentation. Um, I found when I was there for so many years learning that the documentation was was subpar at best. And, and not only was it a challenge to put together the work that the internal accounts were doing, um, the, the staff had a really hard time understanding the accounting, tying out retained earnings, you know, understanding what an accumulated deficit is and, and several other items. Um, and, and not only do I have to teach myself to be a manager and a better accountant and, um, and you want to develop, now I'm actually their teachers in terms of accounting. Um, and that was a really big challenge. And it's one of the, it's the main reason why I left public accounting, um, was to attack that market. I wasn't confident enough and I wasn't, um, I wasn't there to do it on my own. So when I, I left, but when I left the midsize firm, it was, I think we've lost Your audios uh, dropped off again. Okay. You there? Yeah, okay. we can hear you. All right. So you're out again. We lost it you again. It keeps dropping. I guess I got to get a new microphone now, huh? That no blue. problem. All right. You there? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can. So, um, you know, I, I my technical expertise went through the roof compared to where I was before. I learned how to be a manager, and, and I also figured out I was a good business developer. So, you know, with all of that, I, I tried to attack the small business market from an internal perspective, looking on the inside, providing value and service on the accounting itself. Um, that's what makes that end result. Um, I, I wasn't able to do that at the mid-sized firm just because it was a big firm. Billable rates were, were crazy. I was, I was billing out at $550 an hour for my time and $200 an hour for bookkeeping. I mean, you can't. That's not a sustainable practice, especially when I'm trying to build that accounting and, and people are selling accounting services for $100 an hour. Um, and bookkeeping is bookkeeping as long as it's good. So long story short, I, I, I bailed on the big firm. I, I changed my passion and goal to become a partner. Um, it no longer was my goal. It was for a while. Um, but when I made this decision, partner was off the table and I was okay with that. It wasn't a mistake leaving the big firm, but the firm I went to next was a big mistake. It didn't last very long. It was just personalities didn't match. You know, it just, it wasn't there. Like, you know, and I tried so hard, like at setting expectations and we did such a good job. I felt like the, 
the team, you know, the, the other side and myself of just setting all that. But once it got started, it wasn't really what I expected. It didn't work out. Ultimately, I wound up um, being terminated and, it, it, and, you know, led to other things. And, and that's that. But um, that's like that's the moment, Phil. Like I'm canned and now I have a life decision to make. What am I going to do? Am I going to go back to practice? Am I going to go back to the mid-sized firm? Or I'm going to say, you know what? What I saw in the market was was accurate, and it was when I was at the other firm. The the bookkeeping was very, very um, had a lot of opportunities for improvement, and I know, and I am doing it, and 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 I knew then that I can change that. Um, so I had the confidence and I had the chops at that moment to say, you know what, this is it, let's do it, and. I really haven't looked back and, and it's been a tremendous struggle. Um, you know, I'm having a hard day today. I, I was having an issue with some tax returns earlier, um, you know, and it's getting down to the deadline and, you know, it's tough. It's a tough business. And now I'm on my own. Like the biggest thing for me is that when you go out on your own, guess what you don't have anymore? You don't have a direct deposit. So you don't have that automatic money going in. And and that was probably the biggest one. And I have a family. I live on Long Island. As you know, Phil, it's not a inexpensive yeah it's, you gotta make 200 grand to be broke around here um but you know here i am that started in september of 8 uh, 17 um we're here april of 19 and i feel like my first year is behind me like this is my first tax season really since i left public accounting i have a lot of returns now i have a lot of accounting my brand is growing to a point i couldn't imagine in the first year and not that that was you know whatever what what's exciting and the most exciting and and what I knew and and I've confirmed that the accounting sucks it just yeah, sucks yeah. it's not good and and it's not just here it's everywhere and if the data of You're the talking data about doing day, the uh, write up work uh, such yeah saying? yes okay. yeah well, all the transactions yeah. yeah but I mean today I mean when I was at my small practice there were no QuickBooks uh, so really, uh, the clients would look at you and say, oh, you, can you do that work, uh, financial statements and all that? And uh, so QuickBooks, I felt, uh, well, it didn't affect me, but I know it's affected a lot of people going into practice today. That's just one less aspect of it. And also, you know, we did payroll. I did payroll. All right. And now QuickBooks is in payroll. Everyone's in payroll. And it basically came down to the tax practice. And however, you know, here it is. You know, when you think, hey, you can do taxes. Next thing you know is you got TurboTax advertising all over the place saying, hey, uh, well, you know, just buy TurboTax and you can do your own returns. But finally, I think TurboTax is waking up and saying, yeah, and you have a CPA on call. So they're actually giving some credibility now to the fact that you, knew a C, you need a CPA. But, I mean, you know, for someone really wanting to get started today in practice, you know, a small practice, all right, what would you say? Would you recommend it to them with all these uh, co companies that are in the bookkeeping line, the QuickBooks and the TurboTax, all right? Do you still think, I mean, I know you've been in now a few years, but do you still think that someone who has got a few years of experience, got their CPA, can they go out and make a living doing all these services or do they have to do other services? So you guys can hear me okay? Yeah. Yep, you can hear me, yeah. So the best answer for any accountant, and I'm sure they could appreciate this, is, is it depends. Um, and it applies here. And, and what I can say is, is, is this in terms of everybody wants to be an entrepreneur now, and it's the sexiest thing ever. Um, I think there's a lot of understanding that the younger generation needs to get in terms of the calluses that must be developed at these larger firms. I went through a lot of different experience with a lot of different mentors. Somebody taught me early on in my career that I'm going to build my own uh, uh, foundation, my professional foundation, by taking pieces of all my mentors, the things that I liked, and developing into my own. Um, I, I think if you're going to go out on your own and do your own business, you know you have to, you have to find a way to absorb that. Like you know Juan Garcia from Gold Lake Media. I know he was on your yeah. Your I wanted show to recently. Uh, bring that up. Not yeah. So the reason why is, is you know, and I'm bringing this up because I, I think he's a, he's an anomaly, and and I think people will look at that as of like, oh, I can do that. But but guys, you got to take a step back. You know, he was in for a short period of time and jumped. 
like he did it. That's unique. I was in 13 years and finally went. I probably stayed longer than I needed to, and I could have learned a lot quicker. Um, and, and my advice to those that are wanting to do it, you have to put in, like LeBron James said it when he when he left the Heat. Like that was like his four years in college. You got to get your PhD in business somehow, right? Like some street PhD or experience. Mm-hmm. And I think if you're going into the profession, have an understanding of what you want to do. And if you don't, then try it all. Look at these jobs as as jobs. I mean, it's career opportunity, but go in, learn, absorb. And, and when you think your learning curve is, is maxed, you take the new opportunity. There's so many jobs available for accountants, just so many jobs. And, and, and you know, I, I don't want my my peers and my mentees to be scared of that because I know that accounting is learnable. It's teachable. The debits and the credits, once your brain starts functioning in a way of how a general ledger works, you're able to provide a lot more value to the client. So if you, you can learn those things, guys and girls, right? Learn the accounting, the bookkeeping. Zero is a great accounting platform. They have a community. They have an entire brand. They have an entire group of people that are there to help you become a business owner. And I don't have well, over. Let's go back here a second. What is Zero? Well, I don't think I've heard oh. of it. So Zero is um Zero is an accounting software. It's a it's a bookkeeping software. It competes with QuickBooks. Uh, QuickBooks Online, QuickBooks Desktop, specifically QuickBooks Online. I, I have issues with QuickBooks Online. Um, I, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a professional. I, I'm a professional accountant, and and efficiencies are everything. You had mentioned it. The data going in, right? The bookkeeping, it's got to be perfect. Otherwise, it's a waste of time because the robots are now doing that. And like you said, back in the day, that value add was in the tax. Yes, it's changed because now the value add is in the output. It's in the deliverable, the end product. Young folks, mid-sized folks, whatever, if you know how to provide a deliverable to a client, okay, and understand what the end product is going to be, whether it's going to be audited, um, excuse me, um, audit work papers, which you can you can do. I mean, you know, that's a great idea if you wanted to build a practice around outsourcing audit work papers, you billing a certain hourly rate working in your house or, or working at a Starbucks or whatever it might be is going to give you a competitive advantage to do audit work papers at a much lower rate than, than the other firms are doing. And it's all about time and money, right? I mean, yeah. you know, this is, this is innovation time. You know, you want to be your own boss. That's great. Um, if you get excited about victories, you know, this is not going to be the job for you because those victories, there's no other profession, probably medical, that the highs are so high, the lows are so low. I mean, things can happen in a heartbeat. I can get a notice, um, you know, I can get a big refund for a client and then get a notice in 10 minutes that a different client owes a load of money. Ooh, excuse me, you know, a buttload of money. And and that's like, oh my God, can you handle that? Is that something you can absorb? This is accounting. Now, nobody's going to die, but this is people's money and you need to have a particular bedside manner with that. You know, I see a ton of professionals quote unquote, out here in the, um, you know, in the world. And I see their tax returns, Phil. So if I'm able to see things that are incorrect, um, I can teach that. And, you know, the only way you're going to get that stuff is by the experience. So do you want to go out on your own? Okay. What do you want to do? You want to do the art work papers? Okay. You want to do tax returns? Okay. You want to do the accounting and the bookkeeping? Okay. Payroll tax, sales tax, do you know how to do it? How are you going to learn it? I can teach it to you, right? I can help you. There's, there's tools out there. But until you can mentally and emotionally accept the fact that this is what I want to do. And a lot of people follow me on social media and they tell me I'm an inspiration and they tell me that they look up to me and they see the end product. That's the easy part, okay? My goal for anyone is, is in a, from an advice perspective is – if you can master the debits and the credits, the general ledger, know that's – Your audio dropped again. Okay, your audio dropped. Okay. At the debits and the credits. Okay. Well, we were talking about the debits and the credits, and the debits have to equal the credits, right? Can we hear him now? No? Can you speak? No, we can't no, hear you still. Right on again. All right. But uh, we'll give him a second to uh, – isn't technology great, Rob? Yeah, yeah I'm it sorry. keeps me employed. Oh, yeah. So anyway, go ahead. By the way, can I drop back? Uh, you, 
So, uh, how, do you, how do you handle people with social media? What do you do for people on social media? Um, so, you know, uh, and just get there real quick. So, yeah, so that's part of it, right? Um, um, what I, what I'm putting out there is my own experience. You know, I've had, I've had a career, you know, and, and I like challenging and pushing buttons. Um, that's, you know, that, that creates things and, and that's okay, but cause I'm ready for it on social media, uh, LinkedIn and Instagram specifically. And, and you can follow me, uh, all my social media handles are CPA JMAC or JMAC CPA. Um, those are essentially my entire handles for Facebook, Twitter, um, LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, Instagram is, is CPA JMAC. And let's talk about Instagram for a second. I put out all this content videos of myself working behind the scenes, advising clients, advising prospects, um, telling my own stories. You know, I have a lot of, um, documents from my career that I've been going through and I've kept them. And, and it reminds me of where I've come from, you know, where I started from and all the struggles I've had. So I share all that. That's opened opportunities for me to mentor younger professionals through direct messaging on Instagram. Phil, Robert, I, I've actually helped two, um, two professional, two, two, two students, one in Alaska, Edgen, who I'll give a shout out to, um, who I've never met, talked to, I don't even know what he looks like, but it's just been all DM and email. He sent me his homework and, and I was helping him with his homework and it was depreciation and journal entries. And he says to me afterwards, he's like, wow, Justin, you're the best tutor I've ever had. And, and talk about compliment. He didn't write me a check or nothing. That's the best part. That's how it feels good. And, and right. that's how I'm helping these people because, this is a hard profession, Phil, and, and it's being just like any industry, right? There's a lot of people that are running these industries, and we have a very significant generational issue. Um, and, and, and it doesn't really seem like anyone's bending. Um, and I think that's created problems, specifically women, you know, and, and what I've seen, I'm, I'm, I've been finding that I'm talking to a lot of females um, because they're not, you know, there's workplace issues. Um, and, and they tell me what an inspiration I am and, and what I'm going to do after tax season, Phil, there's a couple, Rosanna being one, um, there's a few others that I'm going to meet with after tax season and have these conversations with them. I'll have advice and I'll be there to guide and mentor and reach out to and everything. It's up to you. I can't do that. I can't sell you clients. But what I can do is tell you that Juan Garcia of Gold Lake Media can help you with the marketing. Justin McAuliffe of CPA Enterprises can help you with all of the business, you know, guidance, right? Like I'm the quarterback for my clients. I do everything. Everything goes through me. I don't do everything. I outsource things. I subcontract things, but I'm the quarterback and I'm responsible for it all. And I can do the same thing from a managerial mentoring perspective. It's a tough business world out there. People are going to want to take advantage of you and, and, and not pay you. And, you know, and, and you're going to have that need to service because you want to get the clients, but it's going to be painful. The people that you're working with right now, maybe are mentoring you, but, you know, maybe they're not. And, and you're not going to get what you want there. So I'm, I'm doing that in social. Like, it's just so cool. Like, I'm talking yeah. to people. The other person I did was, uh, I think she was in Australia. She, I'm helping her with her homework, Phil, her accounting homework. And, and with Edgen from Alaska, he gave me like six problems. One of them was really hard. I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't figure it out. I didn't, I didn't know what they were asking. And, and mm -hmm. maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's a bad thing. I think it's a great thing, really, because it was challenging me. So then anyone listening to this, guys, you need help with your homework. Like, that's good for me. That's good for you because that keeps my technical skills sharp. QuickBooks feeds data, right? All the data is being fed in there automatically. That's easy. That's not a that's not a product. You have to read that. You have to code it. You need to make it organized, concise, consistent, legible, readable, understandable. Your general ledger tells a story. That's the value. That's where your billable rate comes into play. Finding a way to streamline. Like Zero is a is a bookkeeping software. They partner with third party applications specifically to have that feeding uh, accurate payroll. Uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, expenses, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, this is super early. Um, this is this doesn't exist. And yeah. um, non compete agreements and non solicitation agreements are what's scaring a lot of people, and and that scared me as well. Um, my advice on that is that nobody lives your life except for you, 
And if you are a good person and you follow the rules and you don't solicit, you have nothing to worry about. A lot of these firms throw these non-solicitation agreements. You lose me? You, me again. you know, and, and it was it scared me, too. Um, but they're not enforceable. New York specifically, I know California as well. These aren't enforceable because it's essentially imprisoning you. And that's not fair. They're anti-competitive, is that what you're saying? Yeah. You know, and and that's not a human being element, gentlemen. Like that really, that has nothing to do with work product or, or value add or mm-hmm. money. That's about human beings and understanding that 22-year-olds are still human beings, okay? And threatening to sue them if you take a client, that's not okay. And guess what? It scares them because I'm talking to them behind the scenes. But I'm telling them that you don't have to be scared because I've gone through it. I've dealt with it. I have all of the pain. It wasn't that bad. Yeah. yeah. Guess what? You got me as a mentor. I have a mentor. Like I had saying. Are you you billing yourself out as a mentor? Uh, You you charge a – no. Okay. No, not yet, guys. Look, as far as I'm concerned, anyone who listens to this and reaches out to me is an early adopter. Early adopters get the best deals. Eventually, my capacity is going to reach a point where they will have to charge for this. Um, And I'm going to, and I do plan on that. But at least until then, um, I want to help as many as I possibly can because that's going to build my team, right? I'm building an entire team, and I want domestic resources. I outsource to the Philippines. I outsource to India. Everybody does. Anyone who's telling you not, they're lying. It just You have to do it to stay sustainable. And I'm not only am I transparent about it, I introduce my clients to my India staff, to my Filipino staff. I have Jess and Sag. They're fantastic. But mm-hmm. that's another thing, right? Like I can help you set that up. I can help you set up the back office. I can help you set up uh, you know, the marketing and, 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 and not have to worry about the non-solicitation. Um, I had a team around me that, that advised and guided. That I would not, uh, you know, I wouldn't have been, uh, uh, you know, I wouldn't have survived without them. So my duty is to then pay that forward, and um, and just to make sure that if you guys really want to do this, that um, don't be scared. Just do it the right way. If you have a client relationship at your current firm and it's your relationship, where they love you, or maybe they offer you, you know, a job, take it. Because you know what, after tax season, maybe they fire you anyway. Um, I was laid off once. Um, because of that exact same reason. And, um, like you said, it's a, it's an anti-competitive market. And with that comes a level of managing your people to do what you want. Um, I don't like that. Let me ask you, uh, we were talking about, let's give Juan Garcia a plug. Well, we don't have to give him a plug. All right. He doesn't need uh, a plug. No, he actually, we had one on, as you mentioned, uh, and I heard the podcast exactly. you were on with him. What was that? I heard the podcast that Justin was on with him. Oh, thank you, Robert. Yeah, I, yeah, I listened to, to Juan's, of course. Thank you, yeah. And uh, tell us how uh, Juan helped you. Exactly what does Juan Garcia do uh, to help someone who has an accounting practice to increase their revenue? Can you tell us? In- of course. Oh, of course. Okay. He's, he's, my, he's my outsourced CMO, just like I, I'm an outsourced CFO or an outsourced controller or even outsourced COO in some, some capacities. Excuse me. He's my outsourced CMO. I think the interesting part of, of Juan and Gold Lake Media uh, starts with how he and I got connected, which is through social media. August 2018, I put a call action out to, to Twitter um, and, and a couple other channels. I think YouTube. I just wasn't going – I wasn't even on Instagram then. Juan and I got connected and, and he was still doing videos and, and like just not doing what he's doing now. And he and I developed a relationship through social media um, and then which really developed uh, once link, uh, once uh, Instagram kicked in and that evolved. I didn't hire him as my CMO right away. But what changed for me was seeing the level of content he was putting out, understanding the amount of work that I was putting into developing and producing and creating and editing my own content, seeing that it was, it was successful, but it was taking too much time. And that's my way of networking. That's my marketing. That's my, you know, that's my, my, my mixer. That's my, you know, holiday party, whatever, you know, the, the, the handing out the business cards. And this is where it comes from. And, and over time, Juan's content got better. Um, you know, my content got better. It just keeps evolving. And, and then I was, I was invited on again with Juan for a podcast. 
um, because he had a cancellation on the first one, and then we set up a second one, and we we were done. We've done some spontaneous ones. So what I do is I record everything. I record it all. I got a GoPro. I got my phones. I got this. You know, I record all of it. Um, and as I have guests, I obviously get approval, and 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 that's great. I create content from it, but then I give it to I give it to Juan, especially the big meetings and my in my podcast and my in my car and stuff for Uber and Lyft. Um, and then he creates it into pieces of digestible, visually pleasing, and and editing and music and cool little emojis. And he puts that all together for me. Obviously, I pay him for that, and we have an agreement. And I get a certain amount of pieces per month. Okay, that's what he does for me, because I don't require so much the coaching. Um, I don't require the lead generation. I generate my own leads. I have my own style. Um, I get advisement and coaching from Juan, but that's part of our relationship. We've invested in each other. We help each other. And what we've recently found out, and I think I didn't know this about him and vice versa, is that we just push each other. I've looked up to him as a younger person because I see that confidence in what he's able to do, and I want to provide that same level at the accounting. But he's not an accountant. Like He really wasn't an accountant, and and now he's gone all in on this marketing, and we're creating, we're creating something. We have a whole. We have Jose Zavala. We have JJ the CPA. We have myself. You know that there's Juan. Um, you know we're actually starting to think about somehow some collaborative, some collaborative group that we're gonna the four of us alone. Uh, JX4 is the name we're throwing around, but we'll see what happens. But from that, I actually have a buddy, um, Arian in Bosnia, who's 19 years old, and he wants to become a CPA because of us. Like, how cool is that? Like, he's watching our content. And that's coming from Juan. Juan is the driving force in all this because he's the marketer. He's able to make the connections. I follow him on social. I see him commenting. I see him engaging. I follow him. I look for somebody. I tag him in it. We look to see if there's somebody we can work with. And then it's just evolved since then. We have collected, I guess, if you want to say that, or we have recruited is probably a better way. Um, Other like-minded people. Um, gentleman Eric, I just spoke to on LinkedIn. He and I are going to connect. Um, I have some other people in my um, hopper that are all looking to get involved with this community that we're building. And in my opinion, um, that's not possible without Juan. I don't think if Juan doesn't exist. Uh, what? Tell me what? What did Juan do? I mean, uh, yes. increased your revenue. What? What did he do? No, uh, no. So right. So Juan does that. My goals are very specific. I specifically need help with creating and producing the content. My content drives sales because my content is technical. I've been told I have the most technical content on the internet, which is a huge flattering compliment. I don't agree well, with that. What's but an example of what he created? Tell me, give me an example of what you just so said. So recently, recently, I just I just recorded a conversation, not a recorded a conversation. I I. I captured a meeting with my uh, strategic partner, my tax partner, Edwin Casanova. He's here in Long Island. Um, I recorded our hour oh, and a half. I love that name, Edward Casanova. Yeah. Only yeah. in New York would you have that. He, you have and, he, and, he, and he backs and it up. Eddie Casanova, Edwin Casanova. And he's, you know. Tony Soprano. Okay. There you but go. Anyway, good. There you go. Uh, <laughs> um, he and I were, we had an hour and a half meeting. Uh, we were talking about two clients. Um we had a uh, solar tax credit complication, not really complication, just the calculation we were working through. A couple of their amended opportunities. You know, we had some new clients and, you know, we were seeing if it made sense to amend returns. And, and I recorded the entire thing. Um, you, you see me, you know, I'm, I'm very, you know, I have a lot of nonverbal communication and use my hands and stuff. And, and, and from that, I'm able to create technical content that I capture and then uh, Juan cuts it up into pieces, minute, 45, 30 seconds. That is leading to business. That's leading to opportunity. That's leading to exposure. And and having all of that content that Juan helped me create is going to lead to eventually some sponsor dollars. You know, we'll, I'm looking to build a brand and, and be able to monetize my, my social media because I'm growing an empire and an enterprise. Juan is part of that, and he's helping me with creating that stuff. However, our relationship first started with strictly sales and marketing. He was helping me attack LinkedIn, uh, 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 extract, um, 
you know, extract contacts and qualify leads and stuff like that, because the qualifying leads takes a tremendous amount of time now. And, you know, anyone that's considering a marketer, um, you know, that would be a good start is, is how to qualify leads and how to sell. You know, he, he does that, too. He, te- he teaches you how to sell, um, you know, and that's um, that's part of it. So can you hear my kids, Robert? It's perfectly fine. Uh, OK, so you know, uh, it's interesting. You know, I don't think, you know, accountants don't understand. All right. You are an accountant. But you're yes. also a businessman, yes. all right? And if you're not going to say, hey, I'm not going to do marketing. I'm not a salesman, all right? Well, I don't think you have a much chance of succeeding. You have to know how to market, you know? Yep. And, you know, that's the key thing, I think, for any business. You have to know the art of marketing. And without that, you'll never succeed in any business. And um, although, you know, I spoke to one, very impressive uh, I didn't realize that. Uh, well, he's fairly young, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, yeah, he's still in his twenties, early twenties. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's around my age. Yeah, <laughs> all right. But anyway, you're, you're 21 with how many years character. experience, Phil? 53. Oh, sorry, you're 21 with 53 years experience. Well, I was actually uh, preparing tax returns in the womb. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! That's a special mother you have there. The womb with the Tyrannosaurus Rexes, right? We were ahead of our time. We were ahead of our time, you know. And once again, is as a result of growing up in New York. Okay, all right. Sure. Sure. Someone said, "What were the first words that came out of my mouth?" CPA. And you know, that's when I was two years old. By the way, two years old. But hey. anyway, on a serious note, let's get back. <laughs> all right. Sure. So one now. Can you, are you able and do you feel comfortable? All right. Can you give us an idea of what's the percentage of revenue increase you've had dealing with one? So that, that's, listen, I, I don't, I, I wish I could answer that question for you, you know, very specifically. And I can't, I I don't track that. I don't understand. I don't do that. Um, I don't track, I don't have Salesforce. I, I don't do that. Like what I'm, I am strictly focused on is, is making connections and can I listen? Yeah, I mean, he's got me. He's got me five clients, five clients, um, just this tax season alone. And not him specifically, but him. He and I together creating what we created is capturing the attention of people. Um, you know, I connected with with somebody recently who was an old college friend, and and saw my stuff that Juan helped me create. And he's like, "Oh crap, you know how to do S corps?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, I need help with S corps. I'm like, oh, great, I can help you. And I'm about to amend um, his wife's tax returns for for two years, maybe a third year. We're not sure yet. Um, we might get fifteen thousand dollars back. And I'm not. I'm I'm under. I'm I'm being very conservative on that. Um, yeah. So, you know, how can I possibly answer? Um, you know, the amount of revenue that Juan's created for me, especially if it's up here. Now, if I had Salesforce, I can give you that in two seconds. Like boom, yeah. boom, boom, done. But especially if Juan's content, uh, you know, creation and partnership with me and, and what we're able to do together is, is getting eyeballs, right? And then those eyeballs are going to drive a client. Now, this client, it's a small bookkeeping project, a small tax return, probably a couple of grand a year, you know, monthly reoccurring revenue. All right, all right. But these amended returns now, Phil, they could what's be, that going to be? Yeah, that could be, right. So how do you put a price on that? One piece of contents, whether Juan did it or not, right? Juan's allowing me to produce more and more and more and more and more, right? Volume, right? And quality gets better and better and better. Um, you know, w- without all of that, it's it's not there. And like you said, with the marketing, um, but at the end of the day, it's still me, right? At the end of the day, it's still you, whoever's listening, you know, Jim, Bob, you know, Sarah, whoever. Um, you know, that's going to be up to you to deliver that. Juan's not just going to create this business for you and just have all of these clients and, you know, you're going to be, no, that doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Um, you know, you got to put in, you got to put it in, you know, like you're if you're going to really do it. out what you put into it. And you know what else is Juan going to do? He's going to challenge you big time. He's going to hold you accountable big time. And you know who else is going to? This guy right here, JMAC CPA, because I'm going to hold you accountable. Because if you want this, then, like you said, you're going to get out what you put in. It's garbage out, garbage in. Okay, you can't just sit back and chill, guys. Okay, you got to go out, you got to market, you got to attack. Okay, you got to look for the opportunities. Right? Don't be afraid to innovate. There's just so much there. And Juan, myself, JJ, 
Jose, JX4, which we're creating, that's what we're trying to do, Phil and Robert. Like, if we can create this group in this community, and maybe it's a fee, maybe $10 a month just to commit to it, right? Maybe it's zero. It doesn't really matter. It's not going to be a money-making thing. It's going to be a legacy thing. I feel very strongly, this is my opinion, this is nobody else's opinion, I have no facts to back this up, seeing the market, the efficiencies, the overhead, you know, the big balance sheet items that I know a lot of these firms have, because you see how they invest, unless you're a big four, you're not really part of that group, I think there's going to be a big merge, I think there's going to be a big merge, I think you're going to go back to a big eight, big ten mentality, um, just because I just don't see this current system being sustainable, I'm seeing the current crop of younger professionals being disengaged and uninterested in learning these ways. I've written several articles about this on LinkedIn. Um, I'm seeing it happen, and it's not just here in New York. It's everywhere. Um, so over time, if you don't have any resources to do the work, something's going to give. Um, and, and you see these firms building, and you know that's, that's balance sheet, right? I mean, they're not using cash for these buildings and these investments and, and all this stuff. And I think they're going to merge. Uh, I really do. Um, I think that's going to provide opportunities for all of us because there's so much low hanging fruit. And and <laughs> just real quick as a side, and and Phil, maybe you remember this, but and it hasn't changed. There's boutique accounting practices. Mm -hmm. There must be twenty of them in a two mile radius from my house here in Long Island, and they're all in their sixties and seventies. They're all looking to retire, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody's going to do that work. You know who's not going to do that work? KPMG, Pricewaterhouse Coopers, Cohn Resnick, Baker Tilly, Markham, like, you know, Marks Panif, you know, Happy Tat. Like, none of these guys are going to do that work. That's for you. And going to door to door, if I'm buying construction supplies and Optimum and Verizon from people coming door to door, imagine the value add you can give somebody going door to door and like, hi, my name is Joe Smith. Uh, I'm 28 years old and I'm a CPA and I just left my practice and I'm trying to build, uh, I'm trying to build a book of business. Um, you know, do you need any help with your tax returns? Do you need any help with this, your finances? You know, here's my credential. Here's my resume. Here's my LinkedIn profile. Here's my Instagram profile. Like if I'm a homeowner and I, why I, I don't even know how that would be like, but it could work. Why couldn't it work? You know, like there's, and, 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 and. <laughs> Your partners aren't going to teach you that, guys. They want you to work and stay there. Right, right. Okay? They want you to stay. They're not going to give you that platform to go off on your own. And I'm hearing so, from you, I'm hearing from you that if you want to make it, you have to ask for business. You have to tell people, hey, I'm available. Yes. All right? And if you don't ask them, you're not going to get the business. Well, yeah. And I want to ask you, what's your – people, I mean, I dealt with this uh, – People don't understand. When you are self-employed, you want to make it, all right? It's not a eight-hour a day. A lot of times, it's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's, you know, and people, that's the way I am with our review course. I mean, I'm on, I mean, I'm not an emergency surgery, you know, surgeon, but, you know, I tell people, you can reach me seven days a week. And, you know, they're so shocked with this, you know, uh, you know, like, this is something, like, you do that? You got to be kidding me. And, you know, that's always been my philosophy if you want to make it in a business. Self-employment is not nine to five. It's 24-7, right? 365. And a closed mouth doesn't get fed. You got to go out, ask for the business, and do the service. And if you're not billing the hours or providing the value, you know what you're doing? You're marketing your brand. That's why it's 24-7. Exactly right. That's why it's 24-7. I don't watch Netflix. I don't play video games. Like, I just – it's not that I don't like it. It's just – I'd rather do Instagram content and market my company. Like now that I do that, and and I think a lot of younger people are going to realize that too when it's your own, right? It's building you know, a you, revenue stream. Yeah, and if you don't ask for help, you're not going to get it. If you don't ask for business, you're not going to get it. If you don't humble yourself and swallow your pride and realize how green you are and how you have no idea what the heck you're doing, it's never going to work. But there's good people out there that want to help you. There are. There's a lot of them. Um, I, I just don't know if, if, if all of us really thought there would be this many people to help. Um, and, and I think that's what the most exciting part about the future of the accounting industry is just seeing how this is going to go. And ladies and gentlemen, the business language of accounting is not going anywhere. It's never going to change. OK, it's it's you need to be fluent in that because that's what you're going to do. So talk about investment in one's career. 
I mean, you know, you only need that 150 now, and that's not like a tremendous amount of money. And it's not like the CPA review courses are a tremendous amount of money. I mean, these things are all affordable. They're all part of your budget. I mean, look at about – think about a professional license and degree, a master's degree, a bachelor's – let's use master's because you need that – you know, you need that 30 hours. I remember real quick – I remember you were telling that to Juan about the – about the accounting degree and then the master's in accounting. Like, isn't it redundant? Right. Okay. Like that does, you know, like I would always say, do, you know, do tax, you know, a master's of tax or finance or even like data oh, analytics. Yeah. Like as a little side, like another quick, like something that I uh, I'm seeing some schools at Delphi University is one of them that are that are toying with the idea of offering data analytics, like uh, uh you know, strict data classes. Now that's something that's something I will never have. Ever in my repertoire, it's too much. Well, that's where we're going. We're going to. That's part of the artificial intelligence and all that yes. that you have to know. And let, let me ask you in the last few minutes, uh, what is your? Uh, I was talking to you briefly about uh, uh, the number of people sitting for the exam in the last ten years have dropped. I and I hope my numbers are right, but sixty thousand people versus thirty thousand, and there is a crisis now. If you want to call it, well, there will be a crisis unless this is addressed. And uh, honestly, and once again, this is my opinion, the AICPA, they don't know what to do about it. So they turn to course providers and they say, well, you have any suggestions? And, you know, I think, uh, you know, there's, there's also a concern that this profession could be like the dinosaurs. It could become extinct. Um, and the question is, they AICPA turns to course providers. Do that? They turn to the, the Beckers and the Jaegers and say, well, you have any ideas? All right. And we got to come up. I mean, I don't think the ASCPA is really going to do anything about it unless the practitioners out there start saying, hey, all right, we got to come up with solutions. Of course, we're dealing with the boards of accountancy. We're dealing yes. with NASBA. And, you know, they want answers, the ASCPA. I mean, I don't. Well, I have a solution. When I took the exam, it was a certificate, okay? If you wanted to get the license, then you met the experience requirement. But if you didn't want to practice, all right, you just have the CPA certificate. Now it's just a license, all right? And you know what? For them I to wasn't go aware back, of that. Yeah. For them to go back and be a certificate, all right, you're going to have to go to the boards of accountancy. NASBA, it is such a mess, all right? And I am really, I'm in this business now. All right? I advocate for the CPA certification because I, I know what it's done for me. All right. And, and me. yeah. And, you know, I, I wish I had an answer for the AICPA examination division to say to them, do this, do this. But everything we come up with, you know what they say? Can't be done. Can't be done. Can't be done. Yeah, you had mentioned that before. Like, what would be, you know, I, I would love to hear that. Like, what would be, you know, one or two of your better, you know, like, like, what I have some ideas. I want to, I want to, you know, I want to segue into that um, one specific project that I'm, I'm working on. But what have been some of your thoughts that they've just been so closed minded against? Uh, because the, um, okay, what's happened is I think they were a certificate. They were a certificate. And that worked out well. That was before the 150 hours. Right. And that was a mistake as far as I'm concerned to 150. But, all right, go back to the same thing. All right, certificate. And then if you want to get a license, you can go practice as a CPA. But it's still a certification. And when I bring that up, you know what they say? Oh, we have to get all the state boards to agree to that. Okay? No, you don't. There's, no there's no way in the world that anybody can do that. We can't even agree on legalized marijuana for crying out loud. Do you think there's going to be a uniform well, 50 that's... state acceptance on 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 a CPA uniform license exam? Not going to happen. Well, that didn't come up at the meeting about the legalization of marijuana. But... Well, I'm using it as an example. Well, actually, of that might that might ease the pain if you would think about it. But, <laughs> you ain't kidding. Yeah, but yeah. you know, it's you know, it's I sit there and listen. And I say there are solutions, but you know, it's just a. Uh, it's a mess as far as I'm concerned. And it bothers I, um, Yeah. So, you know, I, I, everyone looks up to Grant Cardone and Gary Vaynerchuk and Simon Sinek and, 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 and you know, all of these other entrepreneurs and, and all of these business owners. And why? Because it's sexy. It looks awesome. And it's fun. It looks great. Right. Why aren't people doing accounting? Because they see a bunch of old nerdy dudes that are like, 
you know, miserable. I'd always said this, like with CPA Enterprises, I'm building this on a blank canvas. And I'd always said this, even when I was at the last mid-sized firm, if I want my younger generation of professionals to become partner and they want to become that, if I'm that firm, I'm making sure my partners are coming in the office two days a week, tan, wearing flip-flops, playing golf, driving Lamborghinis, smiles on their faces, right? That 24-7 mentality we just said goes down. It's a regular job. Like then you can say, wow, I want that. I want to be that person but that doesn't exist. I'm that person right now. Juan is that person right now. JJ, the CPA of that person right now. And that's not enough. That's not even close. Like I am a very specific breed. I have a very specific brand. I'm very unlikable and I'm very lovable at the same time. That's not going to appeal to everybody. JJ, the CPA is very the same too. find the guys that you want to like, you know, be part of that. And, and that could assist. Um, for me, um, what I'm doing here in the state of New York, along with my mentor, um, uh, who, who's, you know, he's a seasoned C-suite professional mergers, acquisition, venture capital, private. I mean, this guy is, I mean, talk about technical. I mean, he is, I mean, as nerdy as they get, but he's also a, a realist and he's a, he's a, he's a maniac and, and he and I get along and, and we are forming with his leadership, um, a committee, uh, with the New York state society of CPAs to focus Phil and Robert on, on specifically this issue, the, um, the lack of investment, the lack of interest, um, and, and just the lack of respect that this profession has out in the world. Um, it just needs to change and not to be well, like, they, oh, have poor image, me. they have an image problem. That's Big another time. thing. Big and time. I'll tell you another Big thing. Time. And I, uh, here in the Maryland area, I noticed that the financial planning, the certified financial planner, they are marketing that, advertising it. Every time I turn around, I see them. Do you see anything from the AICPA, all right, marketing the certification? I don't see anything. Nope. You know, so. And you don't even need it, though, guys and girls. Like, you don't really even need it. Like, if you wanted to, um, you know, again, you know, to plug JJ the CPA, he's got Cracking the CPA Code book coming out. I don't know when it's coming out, but I remember from a mentorship perspective, I've never heard this before. And I just heard this the other day on his podcast. The CPA license is like the like the forbidden fruit for some of these people. Like that's the goal. You build a, as a certified financial planner, as a, as a retirement guy, as a financial manager, whatever you want to call it. If you connect and build a relationship with a CPA, that could be the making or breaking point in your career. Why is that? Because we are the trusted professional, the financial operation, because we talk to our clients on a regular basis. And when they have money to invest, you know, when they have financial difficulties, you know, whatever it might be, where they want to open up a SEP, or 401k or help that's again all of that money is built into these into these these plans it's low-hanging fruit i get paid on that too i have separate businesses you know what i'm saying like there's opportunities to make money on a lot of these different things and that's all left on the table if you're not developing the ratio with the right people and 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 jj focuses on that and i never heard that like wow so that's why everybody is like coming up to me at parties and, you know, trying to get and then taking me out to like, I just thought they were trying to help me and be my, you know, trusted person, but it's just not the way that is. And there are so many of these places out there. And like you, like that's, I didn't even think of that too. The New York state society, the state societies, the AICPA, how are you not promoting that? So then the young, if we have an image problem and a, and a, and a, and a, and a, and a, and a Roman problem, money is a good start like hey guys you can make all this extra money not just billable hours and with all due respect to a lot of these guys what are they really doing it's churn and burn taking the commission getting the assets having merrill lynch or morgan stanley manage it i'm going to be on the back end right and i'm just going to get all this reoccurring passive income which is beautiful like that's cracking the code right but before you can crack the code i think you need to understand that you're crackable like protect that with all I like it was your kid you know and I didn't I was I made so many mistakes in that area and some of them are embarrassing you know like like what was I thinking you know like they just wanted my client they just wanted me like it was just ugh, like I can't believe I fell for it you know and um and and you don't have to because you're gonna know like I want to meet a CFP or I want to meet somebody specifically that can help me because you don't have to do it yourself. Like you can have them do all the work. I like that better. I'll take less money to do less work. Like fine by me. 
like totally cool. Like I just make introductions and make sure my clients are taken care of. And you need to find somebody that you can trust that will never embarrass you. That will literally work for you and run through the wall. They exist. I have one, Sal Tringali. He is my partner. He is my friend and he is my guy. Like I, he's my guy. Like that's it. I've got, you know, I don't need any more. I trust him. And, and Justin, I, I hope Justin, you're going to, you're going to go places. I mean, I mean, we're going to know you like we know, you know, uh, Rob, give me a name. <laughs> Did you say the CPA, Jody Paydar? Jody Paydar? No, and no, but you, Justin, you got pizzazz. I really Thanks. like that. You got I pizzazz. It. You and, uh, you know, you and, uh, you know, Juan. I, I mean, I'm very impressed with you guys. Thank By the you. way, where is Juan? Juan's out in California, isn't he? Yeah, San Jose, San, San Jose. Okay. He's from um, he's from Austin. No, I, I yeah, yeah, he's, he's in, from Austin, Texas. Texas. I remember so, that from hey, our interview. I, you know, I, I hate to say this because people are going to say, hey, typical. You know, I like New Yorkers. All right, and for somehow, all right, we might have gone to college, but we also went to the school of hard knocks, and that was the best best experience I ever got. So, anyway, hey, Justin, I I want to thank you so much. I I really enjoyed speaking with you. My pleasure. And, uh, I would appreciate it if you could go out and find a good kosher deli and send me a corned beef sandwich. Uh, but anyway, corned you know. beef, bagels, pizza, you name it, boss. Yeah, you know, yeah. you'll get it. Actually, I'm coming, I'm coming to New York tomorrow. Are you really? Yeah, I have to. I don't want to drop names. Okay, but you want me to drop names? <laughs> ah, go it's for your it. Show. <laughs> it's your show. No, 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 no. Uh, actually, uh, my daughter, we won a, an auction uh, and we're going to see Mean Girls. I, my granddaughter is going to be 16 going on 30 but nice. now we're going to see teen <laughs> girls and then and this is the whole thing i believe in giving back you know over the years and i've given i've given back and i've gotten to meet some real neat people and i'm going to stop by and one of the people i've met over the years is uh hoda copy from today's show so when we're in new york she brings us over there and she's a hell of a nice person terrific person but anyway uh so we're going to be there but it's just going to be a very short visit so, you know, but I I'll get back there the again. Time. Hey, next time, I'll give you a call. Let's get together. Seriously. Let's yeah, get and Robert, um, you know, I, I feel like this could have gone on again. So I, I hope I get another opportunity to come on board. I feel like this is the beginning of something that could, you know, really turn out to be a great, um, you know, brand ambassador thing. And, and, you know, Phil, Robert, myself, Juan, we're all here to help. And, 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 and it's fun. Yeah, <laughs> it's absolutely. Fun. No, Believe it or not, fun. this is the first episode that went the full hour. And, uh, there is a lot more that can be touched on. So thanks for oh, your time. And we'll definitely reach out and have you on again. You and Juan Justin, I, Justin, I really, really thank you. I, I just enjoyed this conversation so much, really. And and I'll tell you, I, uh, you're, you're a young guy and you're really going to go places. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind. So uh, anyway, just keep doing what you do. Thank you. All right? And, uh, I will. And uh, you do the same. And, and we'll we'll be seeing each other. Okay, and, and, and that's it. Happy holidays to you, okay? Same to you, gentlemen. Robert, you as well. Thank you both. Absolutely. Right, Ladies Once and again, gentlemen, everybody. today, uh, Justin, all right, Mc, no, Justin. McAuliffe. Hey. McAuliffe. 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 Let's change his name to Smith. It'll be easier. J-Mac. Justin Smith. <laughs> J-Mac. J-Mac yeah. in the house. All right, Justin, keep, keep going, you know. Just keep pushing. You're you're great. You really are. All right, Rob, thank you very much for being there. And uh, everyone else, ladies and gentlemen, just follow our podcast. All right, and we try to have interesting guests just like we had today. And we are here for two reasons. We want to be informative and also, all right, if we can, give you a smile. All right, that's the whole thing. So anyway, yeah. thank you, everyone. Take care. And Thanks. Rob, I'll let you take over. Absolutely. Thanks again for listening to CPA Review and more with your host, Phil Yeager. If you have any questions or topics you'd like to hear about, we want to hear from you. Send your feedback live to us here at the studio at podcast at YeagerCPAReview.com. That email will also be in the podcast description for this episode. If you're in the market for a review course or simply want to know more about Jaeger CPA Review and what we have to offer, check out our website. Link will be in the description as well. Don't forget to use promo code PODCAST to take advantage of 15% off your purchase of the CPA Review course bundles. 
on the Jaeger website. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the podcast to keep hearing more of the great podcasts that CPA Review and more has to offer. Until next time, take care. Don't forget to stay tuned for special bonus material. quick sound check make sure everything comes through clear so if you guys just want to start a really small dialogue between the two of you so i can make sure everything's sounding good on my end i'm sorry i'm very shy you know i don't like to talk to people yeah uh uh-huh now justin you're gonna get all excited about this okay i grew up from i'm from long island did you know that i did not know and I grew up in Lynbrook. Do you know where that is? It's four towns away from me, right? You're on the Babylon line. It's the green line. I mean, it's Lynbrook, well, we Rockville, have, Center, we, Baldwin, Freeport, and Arizona. We, we didn't have green lines, red lines. and uh, Okay. It was the line that uh, actually it stopped at Valley Stream. I, on the Long Island Railroad, it's Valley Stream, Lynbrook. Uh, what was it? Baldwin. I'm trying to remember the towns. Uh, I... You know Freeport, the- Merrick, Belmont, Wantua, Massachusetts, right, right. Park. And if that's not a coincidence, I actually worked with J.H. Cohn and Company in Newark. J.H. Cohn? Yeah. So that was prior when they merged with Cohn Resnick. That was before. But did you yeah. say prior to? Yes, yes. That was yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was, I, I came on board at Cohn Resnick about two years after the merge and the year I came on, they were actually still transitioning a lot of the, uh, the branding and the logos, um, right. and the paperwork. So I did still, I saw a lot of JH Cone, um, you know, uh, 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 name brand, I guess when I was at Cone Resnick. So yeah, because, uh, well, Resnick was in long, uh, long Island. Resnick was in Maryland where I am. That's where they're predominantly out of. Um, Ken Baggett, uh, was the, co-CEO when they merged when the Resnick group merged with J.H. Cohn it was Ken Baggett and I forgot the other gentleman's name it's thrown a blank but they were the co-CEO one was from the Resnick side one was from the J.H. Cohn side yeah. um, Ken Baggett just passed away last week uh, 56 years old Ooh. Ken Baggett yeah what happened 56. I couldn't tell you I mean he listen he... we can't hear you we, yeah, we're having trouble. your audio just yeah. muted Still silenced. Gotcha. Now we hear you. You got me? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay. For whatever reason, it just kind of dropped off, and then when you muted and unmuted, right. it came back on. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know what happened. I saw I saw it on LinkedIn. I saw um, I saw it on Facebook, and uh, yeah, it's 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 pretty sad. It's devastating. You definitely got that well, New York accent. I uh, so I was hanging out. I had my brother's christening yesterday. I'm the godfather of his son. And um, the godmother is uh, my sister-in-law's oldest sister, and she lives in Nashville. And uh, he was ha- hanging out with a bunch of New Yorkers yesterday, and he was just – he just sat around and listened to everybody talk. It was funny. Yeah, they are, the rest of those people in the country, they don't speak correctly. We're the only ones who speak correctly. There you yeah, go, yeah, Phil, yeah. right that, there. That's why everyone Long goes Island to the Midwest for language yeah, classes, that's right? A, you know, like, uh, they don't even know how to say the word coffee, you know? They botch that up. There, there's no W in coffee. There certainly is. There, there. Well, and, yeah. I mean, you you pronounce it that way, Robert. And you know, we actually have two words that sound the same, but they're different meanings. You know, like saw. I saw you. Saw. You know. I don't know why everyone else can't speak that way. I saw it's you one, at the park. Word, I saw word. you at the diner. I saw you at the deli. At the deli, yeah. Now, when I was at J. H. Cone. But do you know what a bubbler is? I'm sorry. Rob, do you have to interrupt me when I'm on a roll here? <laughs> Absolutely. Every time. What's a bubbler? What's a It's bubbler? a drinking fountain. Uh, I think I've so heard So in the Midwest, a fountain is something that spews water out of the ground for decoration. A bubbler is something Rob, you drink out of. Rob's from Wisconsin. A water fountain. So we call those water fountains. Yeah. yeah. So a water fountain for us spews water out of the ground as decoration, where a bubbler is what you drink out of. It's a Midwest pop and thing. soda pop and hoagies and, and yeah. grinders, yeah. right? 
Yep. I don't know. Uh, I'm I, I, it's, wife, it's New York and the rest of the country. Yeah. Well, my wife <laughs> from Jersey, and she'd say, we're going down to the shore, you know? And I'd say, no, no, it's the beach. It's the beach, not the shore. And that's... Uh, and now Rod's from Wisconsin, which, believe it or not, is a state. Is that a state? I got state. Of- Go He's actually wearing uh, our state color on his shirt. They're oh, renaming well. it. Uh, they're renaming it Brett Favre, the whole state of Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah, but he's not even from Wisconsin. That's yeah. the ironic part. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's there's some stories going on with the Packers and and uh, and Rogers and stuff. I was reading the other day. That sounds uh, drama filled. What's All going right. on with that? Eh, something with McCarthy and. It was like like, manip- like Roger would sh- would change the plays in the middle of the huddle, and then he would like manipulate the young people to do what he said, and then McCarthy would like you know penalize them, and and it was just it sounds like a high school drama. It's uh, it should be a good Netflix series at some point, I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> now you went to uh, you were at Wanto High School. Yes, sir. Now did you ever play Valley Stream South High? You know I- I'm sure we did. Um, I, I was a swimmer. I, um, I played baseball. I played volleyball for a couple of years and I was on the football team. Um, I got good seats. Let's put it this way. I had a really good view of the games, uh, and I got to wear the, uh, the team uniform. Uh, other than that, um, you know, I, I, I I'm pretty sure football, we played Valley stream. Yeah. Um, that to- page was a big rival rivalry of ours. Uh, you know, most of my high school career. Well, my first girlfriend, uh, uh, well, one of my, she lived in Green Acres, Valley Stream, and uh, then the second one uh, lived in Plainview. I used to go to Plainview. Yeah, I'm in Plainview all the time. I mean, look, I I work on Long Island. This is, you know, I work from home, right. but I I go out to clients, and and I'm always traveling. I mean, I'm going out to meet prospects and 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 you know, COI centers of influence and networking. I, I stay home. I mean, this is the winter. And it's tax season, so for the most part, I'm here. But it's getting nice out, and then it's uh, and then it's fun season. So, but um, you know, I'm up and down Long Island, and I do Uber and Lyft because I I do it as a hobby. Yeah, I actually pick up business too. I I've had an opportunity to chat with a bunch of people about income taxes and refunds and and all this cool <laughs> stuff. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Uh, and I get my business card away. It's a new way of marketing. It's a very I, hey, I have Bill. a dash cam too, Phil. I, <laughs> I record it. I record some of it on audio, and and I haven't had somebody agree to like do a video yet. But I, I record what I'm talking to them about, and I've I've done some some Instagram and LinkedIn content from it. That's interesting. Hey, Phil, That's... we got our new uh, your CPA marketing platform. <laughs> we do. Uh, you just got to start driving Uber and Lyft in your Mercedes. I don't know what the hell you're talking about, Rob. And uh... <laughs> he's got it. Well, no, he's, he's you, right, you can right? sell to the college kids when they're coming in and out of the airports and stuff. Well, we'll, we'll certainly uh, we'll be next to the Harry Krishnas. <laughs> I went to this? school. I went to school this? with that guy, Harry Krishna. Do you know him? You guys hook me up with um with some with some Jaeger swag afterwards, and I will uh I'll, I'll just plaster my Chevy tracks. With some with some uh, 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 paraphernalia, and then I'll get some CPAs in the back, and maybe we'll find some students, and yeah, they don't know what their majors to... are, and then boom, there it is, accounting. We want to get those people from stop taking that course, that crap course called Becker, oh, you know? because we tell people, don't be a, <laughs> you know, you know. Now, of course, we haven't been sued yet, but uh, no, it's. I just came back yesterday from. What's the matter? Were you, you a Becker a... guy? I was, yeah. I, I no, I wanted to let you finish. You know, look, I, I, I do nonverbal communication too, so it's good. I mean, I'm if you know, I'm not looking to talk. I'm just kind of like responding to you. But yes, I took Becker, and I was laughing because you said I haven't gotten sued yet. You know, you guys know a little bit of my story. Um, you know, listen. Well, no. What, what is your? St- do you sued by Becker? No, no, no. I use Becker. Let's though, put that Robert, down, boy. Know. That would be good. That will really. This could be like TMZ. Uh, I, I, I've reached out. Like once I started getting more active in social media, yeah. I did reach out to Becker to try to collaborate. And I told him I was trying to build a brand and, you know, I had used him and Peter Olinto and Tim Garrity were my professors. And it took me a long time to pass that exam. Um, you know, I, I, I passed. Um, and, and, uh, you know, to be honest, I didn't know your product even existed when I was, when I was there because the big firms just, you know, no, they, Becker, they, everyone, they, Becker, they, Becker, they, Becker. Becker yep. went out and they got all these big firms uh, to enter into exclusives with them. And I mean, 
Why? I don't know, because it, the firms are even paying more. Well, I'm wondering if the HR people are getting a little, uh, you know, There's got to be something credit. in there, some sort of incentive. Yeah, there's got to be something. But, uh, no, I know, I've known Tim Garrity for years. Because um, he and I started out as a Lambert CPA review franchise. Okay. Which is, uh, they're still around, but they're not. And then Tim, he went to, uh, he's been, you know what it is? These guys are like, they change t-shirts, you know? They're all, <laughs> every year they change teams. But uh, now I once told Tim, he looks like a game show host, you know? Now that he's getting older, I also told him he looks terribly old, but you know, I see him. <laughs> you, you, you and I are a lot alike, Phil. It's gotta be the Long Island. It's the Nassau it Suffolk. It's the Long Island. Island. It's, it's the Long Island. It's on yeah. your mind and, and uh, you know, look, I would never talk bad about them. I passed the exam. I mean, do I understand what you're saying? Sure. I mean, do no, I Tim's feel nice like there's idea. some lost opportunity and molding and mentorship in terms of assisting with passing the exam? Sure, obviously it's 2019, you're doing this podcast, you're building the brand. Um, and that's super important today. I don't see Becker doing that. I do follow them on social media. I, I don't see this exam is getting more complicated. Um, yeah. The requirements are becoming more. And and let's be honest, the students that are that are that are taking this exam are learning in a much different way. Um, you know, doing things like you're doing, I think, is is not only super important. It's it's imperative because if if these guys aren't passing this exam and 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 I was afraid like I waited because I was really scared I was really scared to take it and study and and it took me a long time but I finally did pass but I mean leading up to it just thinking about the amount of effort and money and sacrifice and so many people fail and yeah, and yeah. quit and and you hear about those stories and and maybe you know yeah. something I've always heard about the exam is the exam only matters when you don't have it um, and, and, and when I was interviewing for up some positions, uh, I was sick and tired of answering the question why I don't have the exam. And then that was it. It was yeah. like, let's just get it. Well, the AICPA is now because of all the genius ideas with the 150 hours and all that crap. There's actually in the last 10 years been a drop. There were 60,000 people taking it 10 years ago. Now there's only 30,000 people taking it. Wow. I, that's and, that's that's a significant number, and uh, I belong to this group of. Uh, we meet with the SCPA. We're coming to New York uh, in April, and then we meet them at another place in uh, during the summer. But we speak with the SCPA Examination Division, and they turn to us, the course providers, and say, "Gee, the numbers are dropping. Anybody have any ideas?" Well, every idea you bring up to them, they say, "Oh, that won't work," because. There's too many cooks involved. You got, you got the state boards of accountancy. You got this NASBA, and you know what they. When I took the exam, it was a certificate. That's really what it was. And then you could get a license if you wanted to. Now it's all a license. That's the way they're thinking. I and 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 I would actually, you know, I I want to ask you that question because I would be interested in hearing some of your ideas because um I I just love brainstorming with like-minded individuals, especially when there's opportunity to help. And, and the numbers don't lie. It's all about data. You know, if it's 50% drop, there's a reason for it. And, you know, for me, um, everything should be on the table. But I feel like the history is extremely important in the exam because, you know, I think history in any life is important. And, and right. I imagine you can tell me about your experience, but, you know, I would imagine it was very similar to other of my mentors over the years that it was a two day, it was two days a year. Right. right. You sat you sat in a room and it was two parts at a time. And if you, right. you had to pass at least two to get to the next one. And if you didn't pass and it was only twice a year and that's stressful, like, you know, now it's you can take it as many times. But right. I, right. Think, right. I think you need to appreciate that. Like maybe there's a reason for it. Like they're making it harder unless people are taking it. That means well, it's more prestigious. Excuse honestly, me. One second. I, yeah, go ahead. Hey, uh, want to start momentarily, Rob? Yeah. No That's worries. Okay. Right. Could you hear the dog? Did you hear the dog? A little bit at the uh, beginning yeah. there, yeah. So, what kind of dog? Um, but, yeah. you know, the history is important. I think the student should understand that um, because I think it gives you a level of appreciation for what you have. And, you know, I think that's important. Yeah. No. All right. So, ready. You right, Rob, you ready? Yep. Ready. Rolling in three, two, one. Hello, everyone. This is Phil Yeager, and I am here today with our CPA review and more 
segment of our podcast. And today we're actually doing CPA more. We don't do a lot of CPA review, do we, Rob? Not really. No. And I'm here today with, all right, our guest is Justin. I'm going to mess up your last name. Justin uh, Mick Olive. How do you pronounce that? Well, I can't hear him. So Your audio dropped off again. Don't worry. I'll edit this part out. You want to start? Let's start from the beginning. You're still off. Hello. There we go. I can hear you now. I can hello, hear you. Hello, hello. Hello, Good. Those blue oh, microphones, yeah. you know? They're not good? They've been known to be intermittent. You get one really good one, and then one okay. can be kind of shoddy, fades in and out. All right. I've heard both well, good and bad know. about them. It, My I first guess investment. Okay. All right. All right. Let's, start. Go. let's go, Rob. So, Justin right. McAuliffe, Phil. It's McAuliffe. McAuliffe. Okay. Hold on a second. Uh, All right, Paul. we're going to take it from yeah. the top okay. here. And... All right, here we go. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one. <laughs> 